The last part of radioactivity is the nuclear fusion and fission processes. So the most common one on the earth is fission. It's used in nuclear power plants. And what you have is a very large nucleus or a very large atom, but it's a nucleus that's going to be split. So whenever you describe fission, you always describe about the nucleus. So a large, heavy nucleus. And in nuclear power stations, they use uranium. It is split. It may sometimes happen naturally, but very often it's aided by um, them firing something like neutrons at the uranium. So it's a very large, heavy nucleus, bombarded with neutrons, and it's split into two bits. And this is to it could there are different types of um, elements produced, but when, once you've changed the nucleus, you've changed the element. So here we have krypton and barium. It also produces other neutrons, and those other neutrons then will hit other uranium nuclei and produce more neutrons. But the whole point of the exercise is that whenever you do this and split up the atom, it takes a, a, a lot of energy to split the atom and it produces a huge amount of energy. And we can use that then for nuclear power. So nuclear fission is a splitting of a large, heavy nucleus. And use the word nucleus, that's really, really important. If you say atom, you'll lose a mark. And don't use the word, um, well, you won't use the word fission again, I suppose. Um, so you, all these neutrons could then lead on to more. If you have three neutrons produced every time, they hit three more and three more and so on, that would be nine the next time, then you could have a chain reaction. So in order to stop that, what they do is they put um, an element like boron into their um, nuclear reactor and that absorbs some of the neutrons. So you don't have a chain reaction, which would lead to a bomb-like situation. Uh, radioactive waste from nuclear power stations is a huge environmental concern. Years ago, they used to just dump it into the sea. Now they're not allowed to, thankfully. The problem is that it stays radioactive for a large number of years. The current solutions are stored at the nuclear power station until, I'm not sure about this here, but um, until it's less dangerous. Now what they do is they store it underwater, then they encase it in concrete, They generally don't do this anymore. Um, then they take it deep, it's somewhere where they have a radioactive waste fill site, and they bury it deep underground in non-permeable rock. Uh, so no, any water seeping through wouldn't be contaminated. Um, and that's left for, for hundreds of years, and it's very, very safely guarded. Nuclear fusion then is the joining of two light nuclei. And again, it's nuclei you talk about rather than atoms. This is the, uh, the sort of thing which happens in the sun. And when that happens in the sun, it's hydrogen and hydrogen which join together to form helium. Now, I know that doesn't look like it should form helium, but it's actually um, an isotope of hydrogen. They use um, hydrogen 1-1 uh, and 2-1 um, to... No, not that they use it. Sorry, that's the process that happens. Um, fusion is very, very, very difficult to control on the Earth, and it hasn't been done successfully yet. But it gives out huge amounts of energy. There's no danger of radioactive waste or gases. Radioactive. No radioactive waste. It's a much cleaner and much less contaminating process. But the problem is it takes huge amounts of energy and heat, which you have in the centre of the sun, to get helium nuclei to actually combine in the first place to form he helium, to, fo to get hydrogen nuclei to form helium. So the source of energy for our sun is hydrogen. And it's just, that's what the fuel is. It's hydrogen, which is uh, being fused together to form helium. So if you were to describe that, you would describe the combining or the joining of two light nuclei to form a heavier one. And that releases enormous amounts of energy. They hope in the future that it will be nuclear fusion, which will be the answer to our energy problems. But so far, it's been very, very difficult for them to get that to work successfully on the Earth, given the huge temperatures that are needed to get the hydrogens to fuse. And the last, just a wee question, during alpha decay, which of the following is true? So we know an alpha decay uh, that whatever um, new thing that is produced, 
whatever new atom which is produced, it has lost um, four from its atomic mass number. So the atomic mass number has been reduced by four. The atomic number has been reduced by two. So this is about relative atomic mass and it's decreased by four. So the answer there is D.